You're now tuning into the Who and How Club with your host, Eris Dejan. Welcome to the Who and How Club, the show where we talk about who you are and how you became the you that you are today and that process in between. I'm your host and the creator of the show that you're listening to, Eris Dejan. You're listening to me on February 3rd, 2021, which means that we are three days into Black History Month. Now, I always had a weird relationship with this month, and not because I'm mixed with a white father who is unknown and was raised by black women only, and not because I'm in support of BLM or quote-unquote pro-black but mostly because I just never knew how I should actually celebrate this month. I mean, isn't black history every day? I identify with more than just being black, so do I even qualify to celebrate this month? Weird questions, I know. But it's never been so black and white for me, pun intended. And I always wondered why this was the month chosen for us to celebrate our history. It's the shortest month of the year. We have Valentine's Day, Family Day, National Dark Chocolate Day, which is actually on the 1st of February. Mm, Distractions, anyone? I don't know. Either way, this year, I wanted to celebrate this special month in Who and How Club fashion. Obviously, if you've been listening to the show, you'll know that I created a platform for people to share their stories. So why not shed light on some everyday people from the city that I'm from and find out what Black History Month has meant to these Torontonians? For part one, we enter Deja Mark Clark, a community organizer and the vice president of the Tomogo Foundation, which is a not-for-profit organization. We'll get to more of that later in the show. He'll express what he does, why he does what he does, and yeah, we get to know him and what Black History Month means to him. I asked Dejamar who he was, and this was his answer. Well, first and foremost, uh, Dejamar Clark, uh, um, born on May 24th, 1992 in the uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, grew up in the, uh, I would say, the South Jane portion of Toronto. Uh, that's where I was uh, pretty much born and raised. Um, yeah, I'm just a young man who uh, who is passionate about many different things, like I'm passionate about politics, I'm passionate about business, civic engagement. Um, I consider myself a spiritual person, a uh, family guy uh uh, not like the tv show but just in general (laughs) you know (laughs) just like you know like i I love family you know um i have a really good relationship with my family i think uh um creating a family legacy is really important so that's just some of the uh i would say values that i that i hold uh yeah um um yeah it's a really good question uh even um um, harkening back to the conversation that we had last night, um, yeah, it was honestly when it comes to really defining oneself, uh, it takes a really long time to really figure that out, right? Like for me, uh, it took a while. It took uh, making mistakes. It took reading spiritual books. It took um, sometimes getting in trouble. It took um, asking individuals about uh, their livelihoods. And just really and truly just um trying to look deep um inside oneself, right? Um psychology really helped me growing up. Um, you know, I'm just you know, little things like personality tests, you know, like what's your personality? Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, all right, all right, so that's my personality. Okay, so that means I like this and uh I'm really good at this. These are my strengths and I can't stand these kind of people and, (laughs) you know, little, little things like that. But, um, but, but yeah, like it's a, it's a, it's a process that uh, a lot of us um, go through. And I think the more and more that we uh, open up ourselves to, uh, you know, just to look inside oneself, you know, um, and uh, really find our passions, you know, really address, you know, some of um, honestly, like, uh, really and truly like really sometimes addressing our demons you know we can really find out like who we are as a person and what our mm. our ultimate goal you know and um yeah mm. why we're pretty much living here you know like yes. what's the meaning of life, 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 life. 
I asked him what he did and why. Listen to what he said. I consider myself like a social entrepreneur. Uh, sometimes I call myself a social entrepreneur. Sometimes I call myself a community organizer. Uh, oftentimes I call myself a power broker. So uh, what I do is, um, well, for one, I have a nonprofit. It's called the uh, Tamogo Foundation. So that's T-A-M-O-G-O -O Foundation. And what that is, is um, it's a nonprofit which essentially seeks to assist refugees and asylum seekers with uh, uh, legal services, mental health support, housing, and just immigration services, right? Because oftentimes um, newcomers, especially African newcomers, you know, or just, um, just newcomers in general, uh, when they come to Canada, there are many services that they don't actually know that they have access to. Or um, they might have issues um, getting employment, obviously. And uh, really and truly, um, many times they're in Canada because they're leaving, you know, scenarios where um, they're in great danger, right? So um, our organization seeks to assist them to, the, to our ultimate capacity. And uh, we have a really good partnership with the Lewis and Associates, uh, sorry, Lewis and Associates uh, law firm, which is an immigration law firm. And, um, and yeah, right now we're located at 2400 Finch Avenue West, which is in the Western Road in Finch area. Um, and yeah, that's, that's just the work that we do. Um, you can always go to our website, www.tomogocanada.org. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, that's just a bit about uh, <laughs> what I do. What does working with your community mean to you? Like, why why get into that kind of field and this type of work that you do? Uh, honestly, um, working the community, um, it really means a lot to me. It's uh, like like you were mentioning before um, about our conversation um, uh, last night. Uh, really and truly, I I um, I personally feel like uh, working in the community is like part of my identity, right? You know, like for me, it's not even about the money. It's not about fame. It's not about uh, anything of that sort. It's just really and truly like I feel better once I like give back and once I help. You know, it's it's fun. Like it's fun to know that you help someone else, right? Because um, going back to identity, like growing up as a young black male, you know, uh, living in a single parent household, you know, um, I saw so many kids who looked like me who needed help and I read through history and I saw you know a pattern of this happening you know decades even centuries beforehand right yes. so uh so um I really started to you know gain a passion for giving back and like some of my greatest role models like uh you know it's Black History Month right and uh I love Malcolm X you know like I I I truly I truly love that man like he's He's so charismatic, so articulate. He had a really great story, and he just so, like so disciplined, and he just had a he just had a yearning to help our people, you know, by mm. any means necessary. That was his model, right? Yes. And um, even leaders that a lot of people may not know, like Booker T. Washington, I really liked him because he gave back in the sense where he wanted our people to have the skills that they needed. You know, in order to um, work in certain industries, so um, yes. those are the men that I really look up to, and um, and yeah, that's how I really started to um, gain that passion for um, giving back. During our conversation, Dejamar reveals Malcolm X and Booker T. Washington as some of his inspirations. But during the convo, he also mentions someone who he considers to be a mentor. So uh, one of them is uh, my good friend uh, Warren Salmon. Um, he's the uh, he's the founder of uh, First Fridays Toronto. So First Fridays Toronto is is uh, pretty much a uh, um, second like organization slash event where where um, black people around Toronto or at least the Greater GTA um, every first Friday of the month they get the opportunity to like. Ex um, um, like show their business, um, give a presentation on what they do. And um, I always go to their events. Unfortunately, now it's uh, COVID. So uh, um, 
it's uh virtual now but um um yeah warren's a good friend of mine and also uh he has an organization he's the president of an organization called the ontario alliance of black school educators and um, i'm actually the student commissioner for that organization and um and it it definitely helps me a lot as far as like um civic engagement and really reaching out to uh you know our, our black students and black teachers in the gta so uh warren salmon is definitely someone uh you know who i i consider like a a big brother and a friend and and um yeah man every time i talk to that guy he's like yo what's going on young blood yeah what's up young blood <laughs> that's, his, <laughs> that's his favorite line <laughs> In the life that we live, we define ourselves based on many, many things. We define ourselves based on how we're raised, what we're told we should, uh, you know, identify ourselves as, what we see on the news, pretty much what we're told. But we don't look inside. We don't know how to define ourselves half the time. I asked Ajamar how he would define himself to a full-blown stranger in three words. This is what he said. Well, I mean, as far as meeting a stranger, uh, first and foremost, uh, humble. You know, um, humble. I have to stay humble um, because uh, you can be a stranger, right? But um, it doesn't matter what your background is or it doesn't matter how you look. You know, I, I, I personally feel like um, like it's uh, it's important to show a humble spirit, a humble, a humble attitude, because uh, you don't know who you're crossing paths with. Right. Like I grew up in church. Um, I don't go to church as much anymore, but I did grow up in church, and I was taught that you could be speaking to angels, right? And I was also taught that, like, uh, when Christ walked around, um, you know, he, he spoke to everyone. He spoke to the lows of the lows, you know, mm. and it doesn't matter who you were, you know, he spoke to you, right? And I think that, uh, uh, like I mentioned before, I don't go to church as much anymore, but... I definitely grew up in um, an environment, you know, a church environment where, uh, you know, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't um, judge anyone. Like Dr. King said, you shouldn't judge anyone by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So, uh, yes. so yeah, so um, being humble is, uh, is one uh, thing that I hold dear to, um, sorry, one value. Uh, I would also say, um, like, uh, intelligence. Uh, I am really, really love... Um, I really love reading books. Um, I really love reading books. Reading books are pretty much like my safe space. You know, uh, I, like I consider myself an extrovert for the most part, but uh, reading books is definitely, um, I would say, my introverted side, if you mm-hmm. may. Yes. You know, um, yeah, just um, it's like ever since I was a kid, uh, books have always like meant a lot to me, you know, um, Mostly nonfiction, but um, yeah, intelligence is one thing, and um, and also uh, I would say another word that would define me I would say is uh, maybe charisma. Maybe charisma. I like. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's. I think um, when you're meeting a stranger, you know, uh, you almost sometimes it's like you almost want them to have like a good impression of you when they leave. Right. Yes. So whether it's, you know, um, you know, having a really good conversation with them or, or smiling with them or telling them a funny joke, you know, like, uh, you always want to leave that mark on that person or they'll say, you know what? I kind of like that guy. You know, he, he he's all right. You know, he he's cool. Yes. You know, or, or like, you know, I, I, I can, I can rock with that guy. You know, I think I think leaving a good impression is always a good thing. So yes. charisma is definitely something that I hold dear to. Valentine's Day is upon us, fellas. Make sure you're ready for wherever the night may take you. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming, are here to tell you that you need to use the best tools for the job so you can be ready for anything on that special day. Two million men are already trusting Manscaped products to groom. Make sure you're one of them. I mean, I'm one of them. I'm not complaining about my products at all. I groom every Sunday. That's my Sunday routine to make sure I'm fresh and fresh and fresh and so clean, clean as per outcast. Um, So, you know, 
I'm not just grooming for myself. I'm grooming for the ladies. And your girl can't think of what to get you this year. Fellas, if you have a lady in your life and she can't figure it out, make sure you tell her to get the gift that's for you and for her. The best way to get started with Manscaped, uh, with the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0, full of the best products to keep you looking, smelling, and feeling nice. The Perfect Package 3.0 is led by their revolutionary third generation lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, which has advanced skin safe technology and features uh, a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Since I've had this product, ladies and gentlemen, I have not had a nick in sight. Um, so I feel really safe when I'm using this tool. I just go wild with it. So, uh, I would suggest you, uh, invest in this as well. It's also waterproof, which prevents a mess on the bathroom floor and in the sink, especially when it's time for Cupid to shoot his arrow. <laughs> I mean, this is hilarious. Uh, and let's be real. We've smelled the worst down there before. Speak for yourself. That's why I'm thankful for their crop preserver and crop reviver. These products keep our boys from sweating, smelling, and sticking. Yuck. Uh, and these products smell good. Their manly scent, oh, sorry. Their manly scent is attractive and will help set the mood if you know what I mean. The Perfect Package 3.0 will also come with a pair of Manscaped boxers that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. Uh, I love their boxers. I really do. Uh, it's time to upgrade those overused pair of boxers to Manscaped's high-performance anti-chafing boxers. Easily the comfiest boxers I've ever had. Uh, 100%. Uh, and complete your grooming game with the new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped with the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas. The cologne is a perfect complement to the collection. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WHOHOW20 at manscaped.com and your balls will thank you. Gentlemen, it's Valentine's Day in just a few days. We got 11 days left until that special day. You got to be special for her. She has to be special for you. Send her this code WHOHOW20 to get 20% off and let her know what kind of items you want uh, off of the Manscaped uh, website, which is at manscaped.com. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code whohow20 at manscaped.com. And that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Don't forget to use our code whohow20. And uh, happy Valentine's Day from Eris, the Who and How Club, and from Manscaped. Now let's get back to the show. <laughs> I think at this part in the conversation, I threw Dejamar a jump ball. I asked him about a quote, and I wanted to know what his thoughts were on it and uh, what it made him feel. Little did he know, I was quoting him. Dejamar, I'm going to read you a quote, and I want to know what your thoughts are on this quote and you know the, what, what this quote means to you. You ready for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, bring, bring it on, brother. Healthy living is a given, but the culture is still unwilling. That's why we should take the role, restore the feeling, worldwide healing. What does that mean to wow. you? Wow, that's a that's a lot to that's a lot to unpack. That's a lot to unpack. Um, Whose words are those? Uh, I don't know. Is that are those your words? No, those I are your words. <laughs> Wait, how, wait, those are my words? How? Yeah, that's a, isn't that, uh, I came across a poem that you wrote online. Really? Really? I wrote that poem? Hel healthy wow. Meals from the Six. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you did your research. <laughs> those are your words, sir, not my words. No, no, no. Let's go over it. Let's, 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 let's go over it again. So, healthy living is a given. But the culture is still unwilling. That's why we should take the role, restore the feeling, worldwide healing. What was you know, your you mind? Crazy? Go, go, go. Yeah, you know what's crazy? I remember I wrote, I do remember writing that poem. It, it was um, it was when I used to volunteer with Toronto Public Health. I was with this organization called the Youth Health Action Network. Yes. So um, that's I do remember writing that poem. You know, um, <laughs> that's something I need to do more. By the way, I don't I don't do that enough. It's a great poem. You know, it's a great poem. I, I I appreciate that, brother. Um, that that guess, excerpt that excerpt from the poem kind of stuck out to me, so I wanted to bring it on, on, present it back to you. I wasn't sure how long it was that you wrote that, but I wanted to present it back to you to see 
what your mind frame was in when when you know with those four lines yeah um my mind my mind was in just like different like i guess in like um different realms like so for me like um i don't consider myself a poet really well because i never really i never really um i would say for the most part sometimes like i try to stay out of that state i don't know why but i try to i try to stay out of that uh that realm of just you know um like writing you know i i should write more i definitely should write more but right. um but sometimes like i i i, I kind of stay away from that i guess it's kind of like some i guess i it's more so like a uh um what's the word i'm looking for like a defense mechanism yeah, of i was about to staying. say that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's I think it's more of a defense mechanism to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Especially uh, growing up, and you kind of want to sometimes you want to stay away from getting into those realms. But um, but when I, not realms, but just like yeah. emotions. Yes. But, yes. Um, yeah. Because it might trigger it might trigger things. It might bring things up yeah. that you might not have dealt with yet, or or you're not ready to deal with in a way. Putting your emotions yeah. on paper and your experiences on paper literally on paper right yeah. literally on yeah. paper yeah so um so so yeah so um but i need to do it more and i think it's important you know just for like positive mental health especially as a young black man i think we should do that a lot more so i i really appreciate you even bringing that up because that's gonna make me um you know um do a little bit more thinking you know and interesting you know my emotions but uh but yeah when i wrote that poem i was more so thinking of just like us as a people you know what i mean uh it could be black people you know it's black history month so black people yes marginalized people or just people in general who you know are experiencing uh you know um i would say uh unfortunate scenarios and situations in their life because we're all going through a battle right yes and um I was thinking of health, you know, I, I was thinking of um, how important health is, yes. how important it is to put good foods into our bodies because, you know what I mean, like our bodies are a system, you know, that has to continuously, you know, be running and um, and it usually runs really well once you're putting good foods into it, you know, Yes. Um, whether it's good foods or just energy in general, you know, and um, also... Um, um, I talked about like the culture as well, you yes. know, like, um, like I feel like us as a culture, us as a people, community, world, etc. I feel like, um, there's so many things that we have to address, you know, there's so many ways where we have to really just address moving forward, you know, and oftentimes you're always going to have the agents that, that pretty much hold us back. You know, and they're always going to be there. Like they're the agents are always going to be there. We're, I don't think we're ever going to live in a perfect world, but I feel like I feel like the more individuals there are, you know, who are who are you know um, putting out good energy, you know, pushing our our our, our community forward, pushing the culture forward. Yes. You know, giving back. You know, and not letting the agents, you know, uh, basically dictate things. <laughs> I think we'll. <laughs> We'll we'll have a much better we'll we'll live in a much better community and world for our our, our future generations, you know. Yes. So um, yeah. And you're, ta and, you're uh, talking about Agent Smith, right? The Smiths, <laughs> the Agent Smiths of the of the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The agents, exactly, bro. Exactly the agents, <laughs> you know. So to to for our final question, Dejamar, and of course it's really the reason why we're here. Um, Black History Month, especially, means so much, so much, so many different things to each individual. Um, you know, we we have some gripes about it. You know, it being in the shortest month of the year and uh, the month sort of compiling or or being filled up with other events to sort of distract you know, this month, this month of celebration of black history, but really black history is every day. Um, and, uh, you know, for you, you know, being you, you mentioned that you are, you, you were raised black. That's how you identify, correct? Yeah. And what's your, what's your ethnicity? Like what, what is your background? So, um, I consider myself a black man. Um, that's just, you know, I'm fine with, uh, that identification. Mm -hmm. Um, um, my parents are Jamaican, 
Mm-hmm. You know, my mother's from a uh, Spanish town. Um, yeah, and uh, so I would say, yeah, I consider myself a black man, you know. Um, and you were born here, right? Myself Afri- yeah, but I also consider myself African. I was born, yeah, born in Toronto, but at times I definitely do consider myself African because, you know, we're all from Africa and yes. we obviously, you know, we're here, we're somewhere else before we came to uh, North America. Yes. So what does Black History Month mean to you, Dejamar? Um, Black History Month really means that uh, we have a lot of work to do, mm. you know. Black history means that we have a lot of work to do. That's one thing. So um, it's a celebration of of uh, all of our accomplishments despite, you know, being faced with slavery, being faced with oppression, you know, um, having drugs put in our community, you know, um, having uh, other ethnicities and other cultures tear down our community and our people, you know, pretty much kidnapping us, you know. Mm-hmm. So despite, so regardless of what we went through, we had so many diamonds in the rough. We had so many jewels, you know, what we, you know, what we brought to North American culture and just world culture in general. You know, um, it's amazing what we could do. You know, it's like, um, excuse my French, it's like almost like turning shit into sugar. Yeah. That's what we did as black people. That's what we did as African people, you know. So it's a confirmation and of, of what we did as a people despite our circumstances. And it's also, you know, a call to action, you know, to pretty much um, do it 10 times. Do it, do it tenfold, mm. you know, and we have the ability and the capabilities, you know, and talent as a people to do that. And it's just a matter of looking what our ancestors did in in, in their turmoil mm. and uh, use that as motivation to do much better for our, our future. Mm. Well said. Here at the Who and How Club, we want to thank you, Dejamar Clark. We're going to invite you back to have a more in-depth conversation, but I think this is a great introduction to who you are as a person, uh, to the Who and How listeners um, and our, yeah, our supporters, because this this is our month, but every day is our month. Every week is our month. Every, you know what I mean? Every year is our year. <laughs> Uh, everything is black and I truly believe that whether it's through the music through the arts you know it all we we make this world go round and I I want us to all you know recognize that and start embracing that fact uh, regardless of the hardships and challenges that we're going through Uh, I want us when you get back on the show and come back I want us to talk about the political side uh, that you sort of you know involved yourself in and and that aspect of your life Um, so would you come back on the show to talk about that of course absolutely man of course man you're I'm all um can always give me a call brother you know anytime you need me on the show um to to speak on anything man i'm i'm always i'm always free you know to 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 um to do that man i appreciate you having me on brother i appreciate you tell the people where they can find you and connect uh, with you, you can find yeah no problem um thank you um you can find me on uh all forms of social media you know i uh, i'm just deja mark clark so that's d-e-i-j-a-u-m-a-r Clark C L A R K E. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, uh, I'm also um, also checking our website, the um, www.tomogocanada.org, and um, that's just uh, my nonprofit. So uh, so yeah, um, just uh, email me, message me. I, I I always I always DM right away, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, yes. I appreciate you having me on, brother. All right, I'll text you a bit later. All right. All right, brother. Thanks for being on the show. Cheers. Yes, you too. All right. Thank you.